Hey everyone, welcome to West Coast Wrenching. Today I'm going to take you through how you can micro squirt your LS engine. We're going to get rid of the nasty mess that's the stock GM harnessing computer and replace it with this tiny but very powerful and cheap micro squirt setup. We'll start by cutting off some of the sensor plugs from the original harness. You're going to need the plugs for the map sensor, the crank position sensor, the coolant temperature sensor, intake air temperature, idle air control, and the throttle position sensor. We'll start by bolting on the coils. Then we'll plug all the plugs into their appropriate sensors. I typically lay the harness out over the center of the intake manifold like this and zap strap it at the back of the engine. And this will help you lay the harness out and get it fitting really nicely to the engine. We'll start by wiring the injectors. These injectors are wired such that they always have a 12 volt power and the ground is the thing that the computer actually switches. So all the red wires here are just hooked up to a 12 volt ignition power source and that power source is going to be the same ones that the coils as well as the crank position sensor use. Now you'll see that INJ1 and INJ2 will fire two injectors on each bank. So each wire fires a total of four injectors all at the same time. That's called batch fire. The reason that you've got two injectors on each side firing at the same time is because if you were to fire four on one side, the rail would lose a lot of pressure on that side and the pressure in the rail would fluctuate a lot more. So when you fire two on each side, it keeps the rail pressure more balanced. So these are really easy to wire. Just splice a single 12 volt power wire into all your red wires your black wires, organize them as per the picture that I showed you at first, so you have two injectors on each side wired to it, and that's it. The coils are probably the hardest part of this entire thing and you can easily figure it out if you just carefully follow the next few steps. This is a wasted spark setup which means that two coils get fired at once and one coil is technically firing on the exhaust stroke. You guys are probably wondering why anyone would do this for firing a coil for no reason. Well the reason is that the coil drivers they produce a lot of heat and they take up a lot of space and that's why they're not on this microscope board and that's what keeps the unit small. So that's actually the same case with the injector drivers because if we had eight of them, it would take up more space. So in an effort to keep things small, that's what's going on here. The coils are wired with two grounds, one switch 12 volt power wire, which is going to be the same one that switches your injectors and your crank position sensor. And then there's this trigger wire, which they call a logic level input. So the only tricky thing about this that I mentioned earlier is that you need to find these trigger wires and if you looked carefully at the wiring, you could probably figure this out uh, without the multimeter thing I'm about to show you. So if you look at each coil, you'll see that there's a brown wire coming off of it, a black, a pink, and then a different colored wire. That different colored wire is the trigger wire. That's the one that's going to hook up to the IGN outs or the LED wires, which I showed in the first diagram here. So if you put your multimeter into resistance mode, or this is actually called continuity testing mode, you'll notice that when you touch the two pins together, the screen will flash. It'll show you some level of resistance that's less than infinite. So that's what you're looking for. So you want to stick one end of your multimeter onto the coil connector, and then you'll go to the main coil harness up here and touch these wires until you find the one that you know makes the multimeter flash. That's how you know that you have the right wire. So you'll complete this process for all eight of your coils and you'll just label these wires one through eight. 
That way, when it comes to actually wiring your coils to the micro sport, it'll be really easy. So once you've got everything all labeled, you'll go ahead and wire the pink wire on the coil pack harness to switch 12 volt source. The black wires are grounds. They can go wherever you want to ground them. I put them to the cylinder head. The brown wires are another type of ground and they have to go to the cylinder head. After that, you want to go ahead and just carefully wire the coils two at a time to the appropriate wires as shown in the diagram at the start of this. Really be meticulous about it. If you get this wrong, your engine isn't going to run. And that's it for the coils. So the crank position sensor uses the same switch 12 volt source which you did your coils and your injectors. Then it'll ground using the sensor ground wire and you'll use the VR1 wire uh, that comes in a two wire package. You want to use the yellow wire and that's it. Up again we'll use our 5 volt reference as well as the sensor ground. And then the output wire from the map goes to the map wire. You'll see all these sensors are essentially wired the same way, so it's pretty easy to get it right. So GM uses a whole bunch of different wiring variations for their TPS sensors, but the pin position should be the same as my diagram there. So for the TPS, you'll use obviously the TPS wire uh, goes to the signal. You'll use the 5 volt reference wire and you'll also use the sensor ground. The IAT sensor, you use the IAT wire and the other end of the sensor will go to the 5 volt reference. The coolant temperature sensor is very similar. You'll use the CLT wire and then the 5 volt reference on the other one there. This part is actually optional, but I really recommend using the stepper idle air control. This essentially is just like opening the throttle when the vehicle is dead cold and it just helps the engine rev a little bit higher and start really good when it's cold. You'll see that the stepper comes with a really good manual on how to install it. You're going to want to use that continuity trick I showed you earlier and just plug your IAC plug into the IAC itself and then test continuity on the wires and see which ones are continuous. Based on which wires are continuous, those will be your 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B wires. So I highly recommend this one. And to install it, go by their manual. It's super easy. You can do it. If you have any questions about it, ask me. I'll help you out. So this is what it looks like when it's all wired up. You'll see that we use this really nice braided loom and this stuff's actually got a split in the center. So take your time, loom it up, make it look good. You'll see the majority of our splices, they all happen at this kind of V point at the back. Just really be conscious about making your splices at the right location so you get this kind of nice V shape to it. Then your wires come straight out the back. And typically what I do with the wires is I'll put a hole in the firewall right behind the engine there. And that's a really nice way to tuck all your wires. All right, guys, so I'm actually here. I'm in my backyard right now, and I've got the micro squirt all wired up and everything. Uh, the power wires are connected to a fused 12 volt source. It's grounded, and if I go turn the key on, you will see I get nothing. The micro squirt says not connected. This is a common problem. You want to go to this communications settings, you just hit this detect here. And you're going to hit accept. And there you go. Now this thing's all connected. So you see, uh, the first thing you really want to do after you've got your micro in is just check your sensors. So if you look down here at my fuel load, uh, this is the map pressure, which is essentially what the outside air pressure is. You see my throttle position sensor is working properly. My coolant temperature looks like the outside air temperature right now. And if I try to crank it over, my battery's dead apparently. <laughs> oh, 
oh, I can't do that. But <laughs> uh, typically, if you did go to crank it over in this situation, you would see that the RPMs uh, would actually flicker. And that's how you know you're okay to try to fire it. All right, so there's a couple of other settings that you're going to want to make sure are right uh, before you actually do try to run your vehicle. So the first one, if you go into the engine and sequential settings, your required fuel here is very important. So I've got LS3 injectors. Mine is 11. That works. Uh, control algorithm, you're going to want speed density, four squirts per engine cycle. Uh, and just make the other settings match here. I've got a six liter, so my engine size in here. So the next thing you want to look at is the general settings. Uh, in here you want the primary fuel load to be speed density and you can kind of just pattern match your other figures to look like mine. I don't want to go through and explain what all these things do. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that explain all these little settings. Key thing here, if you pattern match it, it'll work. Your VE table, this is the main map that your computer runs off of and you want to make sure that it's scaled appropriately, uh, the vertical axis there, fuel load, uh, you want that to go from 25 kPa up to the maximum pressure your engine will ever see. So because my engine isn't boosted, the maximum pressure it will see is one atmosphere, which is 101 point something kPa. Uh, if it's boosted, you obviously want your maximum pressure on the vertical axis there to go to something higher. So your ignition options, uh, you want to set your spark mode here to LS1. Again, just uh, make your settings match these ones. Your basic ignition table uh, is going to look a bit different than this. This is what mine looks like. You can check it out in 3D here. But how these work is very simple. Essentially at low RPM, you don't have a lot of timing. And as the RPMs increase, you want to add more timing. So when I built my first base map, I thought about what a small block Chevy distributor does. It starts at a base timing value of something, say 15 degrees, and it goes up to a maximum around 3000 RPM uh, when the timing's all in at something that you deem to be safe at the start. So I've got 26 degrees here. Uh, when you're starting out tuning it, do 22 degrees at 3000 past. All the other areas of the table there, like the decel area in the bottom right and such, do some Googling on how that should be tuned and just slowly work the table into shape. You don't have to start out with anything too crazy. Now a couple other things here, the idle control. Uh, you want to make sure you have stepper valve selected there and set your, your stepper idle settings just to look like mine and that will get your stepper idle control working well. There is a bit of playing around you have to do with them but again I'm not going to show you how to do that. And the acceleration enrichment settings, uh, you obviously want the TPS dot on. Essentially what that means is when your computer sees the throttle position change really fast, it'll start adding fuel. What happens when you floor it is your car takes a big gulp of air and there's no fuel in that air. Uh, and so what the acceleration enrichment does is it makes that, it makes that big gulp of air uh, get a whole bunch of fuel dumped into it as well. And that will get rid of that nasty bog that some vehicles have which is absolutely horrible. It's the worst thing ever. So if your car is bogging, check out the acceleration enrichments. So those are the basic settings you need in Tuner Studio. There's obviously so much detail to all this and it will take you a long time to get good with this program. But just to get started, if you make your basic settings look like mine, your engine should turn over and run. Once it's running, you need to do some research into how to tune it and that's when you'll learn a lot more about those settings. All right, guys, so just a couple more little things here that I want to clear up. Uh, something I forgot to mention to you is that your fuel pump, uh, the relay is actually triggered by the micro squirt itself. And you're going to want to make sure that that's obviously the two things are wired together. And the idea is that your fuel pump relay and your micro squirt, they always have power at the same time, and they always don't have power at the same time. So they're just wired to the same relay, and you trigger the relay through the micro squirt. So the last thing I want to go through here was some troubleshooting. If perhaps you go to run your engine and it doesn't work, I'll show you the process of what you can do to make sure it will work.
So the first thing, the engine speed, when you crank your engine over and the micro squirt has power, you want to make sure the RPMs are showing something there. You know, it'll show you 10 or 20 or something, but it won't stay at zero. And that's how you know that your crank position sensor is working. So your throttle position, obviously, at zero throttle, it'll say zero. At full throttle, it should say 100. You'll have to calibrate that. There's just a little reset thing you do. Google it. Your coolant temperature and also your outside air temperature or your intake air temperature, they should be representative of the outside temperature. And your fuel load should show you uh, the atmospheric pressure. So the other way you can troubleshoot this thing here is through these output test modes. So the first one, injection and spark. This is probably my favorite feature of the micro squirt, and this is something that's so cool about having a standalone. So if you hit start and stop on the coils there with the output test mode enabled, you can actually spark uh, test fire your coils. And you can do the same thing with your injectors. Obviously with your injectors, you don't want to be test firing them when the fuel rail has pressure. You can also turn your fuel pump on and off in this mode, which is super cool. So if you test those things, your coils work, your injectors work, your fuel pump works, and all your sensors are showing, and it still doesn't start, it's probably something in your basic or general settings. But that's a really, it's a really good way to make sure that your car actually will start when you try to start it. And this is one of my favorite features. So in the test modes, there's also uh, an idle valve test mode. So you just use the home and run position tests and those will move your idle valve around. So if you see your idle valve moving around, it still doesn't run worth a damn when it's cold, then you can play around with the homing steps and the step size. So that's everything I've got for you guys. I really appreciate you watching this video and I want to say a special thank you to two people. Uh, number one, Sloppy Mechanics. Uh, if it wasn't for you Sloppy, I definitely wouldn't have gone with the micro squirt. Uh, he just put so much awesome information out there and that really got me into this. So thanks a lot. I appreciate it. You're helping a lot of people out and your videos are great. Uh, the second person I want to say thanks to is Mike over at EFI Source. During my first micro squirt build, I harassed Mike like all the time asking him questions and Mike always he always gave me quick responses and accurate information so he's a super awesome guy to deal with so thanks a lot Mike I really appreciate it so yeah that's everything guys if you have any questions or comments uh, leave them below I appreciate all the people who subscribe to me so let me know about what you build if you guys do one of these I'd love to see pictures or videos thanks for watching